What do Milwaukee County's Cudahy Woods, Scuppernong Prairie, and Waukesha County, and Karcher Springs in Racine County have in common? They're among 700 jewels that make up the nation's oldest and largest statewide system of state natural areas. This year marks the program's 70th anniversary. In our Sunday morning spotlight, Michael Schlesinger is with a DNR conservation biologist who found the holy grail of a rare plant during a visit to one of the areas in southwestern Wisconsin. So it's sort of a once in a lifetime, once in a career kind of uh, discovery. When you just hear the words DNR conservationist Ryan O'Connor is saying, you know it's of the utmost importance. This past May, he literally stumbled upon a plant apparently no one has seen in Wisconsin since the late 1950s, a perennial wildflower known as a green violet. So this is where it was known from originally in Grant County in the vicinity of Platteville and we found it almost 200 miles away, kind of between a, uh, Eau Claire and La Crosse in this part of the state, in what we call the driftless, northern part of the driftless region. Like, I should, ch I should check that out. Of course, I asked O'Connor how exactly all this went down when the discovery was made. On this hillside, there was uh, a uh, clumps of a uh, plant that, you know, stood six to 12 inches tall at the time, and that was just very different, and so uh, and so I went over to investigate it, and I knew right away that it was something different, and uh, looked it up in a book, and uh, knew right away that it was the green violet. Most violets are small and grow in your, you know, have like blue or white, maybe yellow flowers. Um, you know, this is tall; it's like 12 inches tall, and the flowers actually hang underneath. Uh, the leaves and are pretty inconspicuous. This is a great wildflower book that we carry with us and use in the field ourselves as professionals, uh, but it's also very accessible to uh, your, your beginner. It has uh, small pictures of all, almost all the species, including green violet, and this is what I use to confirm the discovery. What the scientist found is being described by some as something comparable to discovering the Holy Grail. The green violet has a little bit of a mythology about it, and people have been looking for it for so long, and I think there's this aspect of, you know, something that was thought to be lost, and we discover that it is now found, and that is just a really cool and beautiful thing. And in case you were looking to track down the exact location where the find was made, think again. But you're not really telling people where it is, right? Yeah, that's right. We, we don't advertise exactly where they are to per, for their own good, for their own protection, because we don't want people going out and picking them or trying to transplant them into their, into their garden, uh, collecting them. The findings will be entered into a DNR database, one created in the 1970s when bald eagles were put on the endangered species list. But then we realized people uh, wanted to avoid cutting down the tree that the bald eagle was nesting in, but then, you know, companies started asking like, well, where are they? And that gave birth to what we call heritage programs. Uh, and they try to document and keep track of um, the, each state's natural heritage, that is the wealth and variety of all the species that occur in the state. So is this like home away from home? You know, I grew up in, uh, surrounded by woods, and so I really do love being out in the, in the woods, in the shade, uh, especially in the spring uh, when those wildflowers are just coming up. I asked O'Connor how he knows where to look when searching for rare plant life. You know, well, the first thing is we're often not walking on trails. We're often walking, uh, cutting uh, directly through the woods or the prairies uh, or the wetlands. Um, but, you know, we're always looking for uh, what I would call high quality habitat. So uh, pristine, you know, or uh, areas with few invasive species, areas that have been managed with fire, areas that haven't been grazed if it's a mesic woods, and that's where we tend to find most of our uh, rare species are in areas that have, that have had good management or good stewardship. One big worry among many environmentalists is the literal taking over of invasive species. So this whole thing is buckthorn? This is buckthorn, this is buckthorn, there's buckthorn, this is buckthorn, this is buckthorn, this is Dame's Rocket. So all so, invasive species, what is this doing? Invasive species are really uh, crowding out uh, all the other native species, so they kind of monopolize light and water and nutrients, and in, in this case they're shading out a lot of the other beneficial plants that want to be here. I'm told there are at least a half dozen other kinds of plants, like the green violet, waiting in the wings to be rediscovered. In the meantime, while the experts search, we can do our part 
to help them. I would say get out onto your own property and look for things there, remove invasive species, uh, volunteer with other groups that are doing similar work in your local parks. Uh, and if you're, if you're interested, you can also buy a, uh, an eagle plate for your vehicle and a small donation of that goes back to support uh, the good work that we do in our program, not only to survey for things, but also to do that habitat management that keeps these things thriving.